Hi everybody, so good to be here again with you um, in my home and I hope you're all keeping well and I was uh, really excited and looking forward to this and what we're going to talk about is jumpstart your strategy for a well-being culture on board and the key word here is a culture because uh, well-being is not a, a pill that you give a person or an injection and then they feel really happy. It's, it's, it's more of a culture and injecting a culture takes a bit of effort and time, um, not just on behalf of management, but on behalf of, of everybody. So let's get started. I hope you're excited too. So what we're gonna look at, why do we wanna create a well-being culture on board? What, what are the reasons? Why not just carry on? Who cares about people being happy? Some people might think managing by fear is better than management through well-being. So we're going to look at then well-being triggers versus well-being creators. Now, there's a difference, a huge difference. A well-being trigger is what management does, like strategies. Let's, let's say let's have a jacuzzi or let's have uh, parties, let's have... Uh, a snooker table and, and make them happy. So it's, it's little things that you do, but there is a difference between a well-being trigger and a well-being creator. So what we're going to look at is that, yes, it is important as management to inject ideas on how to enhance uh, well-being, but at the same time, it's really important to educate your staff and everybody on board that well-being is a habit a daily habit that has to happen, not from the boss to the rest of the staff, but from the boss to the boss and the staff to the staff. You know, each person is responsible for their own well-being. And so we're going to look at how to, some ideas and some tips on how to create well-being from within. All right, I just want to briefly talk about the survey mission to seafarers which i have read uh, that was carried out in the first quarter of 2020 and they surveyed 2000 respondents and uh, they found out that they rated happiness level on board at 6.13 out of 10 and it's a, a drop from 6.59 now six six out of ten if if i got six out of ten in a mathematics exam, I'd be really, woo, happy. Yeah, six out of 10. But if I scored six out of 10 in my happiness, I'd be like, you know what the bleep is going on within me. I've got to fix it. It's quite low, isn't it? So we definitely need to look into it, raising the happiness levels on board. So a definition, what is well-being? It's simply being well. It's a state of being uh, which is characterized by emotions like joy, happiness, eagerness, excitement, peace, um, and happiness. So uh, I'm going to focus here. It's a state of being, right? We are human beings. And as human beings, we are in a, in a state every time. Like right now as we speak, you guys and girls, you are in a state, you're characterized by a state. It could be a state of uh, worry and anxiety, which is a very popular state. Or you could be in a state of calm and peace, you know, putting things into perspective. Now, so the opposite states of, of uh, the opposites to well-being is when a person is in a state of stress and anxiety, worry, fear, anger, hopelessness, guilt, depression. These are some examples. So when you are in a place of stress and anxiety and you're doing a job, you're doing a task, you're gonna produce something different than when it comes from a place of peace and harmony and balance within yourself. So what are some of the reasons why we need to uh, slowly create and look into um, a well-being a culture on board. Well, you are all interested, you know, as a business that you are, you, you're interested in the bottom line results, but 
you need to also look at the beyond the bottom line because they are producing your bottom line results. And the world beyond the bottom line are the humans, the human factor. And they're producing your bottom line results. And of course, I am sure that you want them to be productive. You want them to have good relations amongst themselves, to work like a team, to support each other and help each other. And I'm sure you want them to produce good quality, amazing quality of work, right? So these are the three things that are of your concern. So there is a difference. You don't need me to tell you that when people are in a constant and continuous stress mode, vibrating in the frequencies of stress and anxiety and worry, Productivity is going to be different. The way they speak to each other is going to be different. The quality of the world might, might be uh, affected. I mean, think about, your, th think about yourselves as, as customers. You all go to restaurants. Uh, you, let me give you an example. You go to a restaurant. You have never seen the chef. You have never met the chef. You don't know what the chef looks like, but you receive the plate of the food that he cooked for you and you look at it and you can tell if the food was made from a place of love and care or from a place of I'm doing this just to get paid and go home. You can tell the, the, the work that a person produces, whether it comes from a place of you know, peace and joy or from a place of stress and anger and I don't like my job and I don't like working here. Right? So, so of course, being in a place of well-being uh, will enhance the productivity and the relations and the quality. Now, the second reason why you might want to inject the well-being culture is your company's reputation. Now, your corporate brand, it's not your logo. It's not what you write in your website. It's not what you communicate to the outside world. But what it is, is what people say behind your back and the reputation. And I want to tell you something that, you know, word of mouth is more important today than ever. Even, you know, Jeff Bezos, the Amazon guy, he's like, every time he opens his mouth about customer service, he's going to say about word of mouth and how big it is. Now, I have news to tell you that it's not just customers who speak behind your back. It's also employees, they speak. If they're happy, they will speak. If they're unhappy, oh God, they will speak. And I've been in the B2B business for many, many years. Uh, my clients are companies, organizations in different sectors. And I have seen companies that attract amazing CVs and companies that attract crappy CVs. And I know that it's because of the company's reputation. And I am sure that, you know, you guys want to attract talent. So my question to you is, what are they saying behind your back? What do the staff say behind your back? What do they say when they talk to their friends, to their partners, to their family? When people say to them, hey, how's it going? How's work on board? How are you doing? Having fun? Lucky you. You're, you're seeing the sea and it's nice and you're traveling. What do they say? Because what they say uh, affects your reputation as a brand, as a corporate brand. And I'm sure that you want to attract talent. And talented people are going to go to a company that knows how to look after their staff. Right, now these are your suggestions and I thank you so much for giving me your suggestions for injecting a well-being culture. Just very, very quickly, this is what all of you have said, good atmosphere and more well-being awareness. This is definitely spot on, well-being awareness, like being taught, learning about well-being and there's an abundance of YouTube videos nowadays about how to find happiness within, how to grow it within, and the effects that um, it has on a human being. Enough recreational facility, yes, I'm going thumb, thumbs up with that. However, this is a trigger. 
This is a well-being trigger, not a well-being creator, because you can give a person the world, all the material world, and they're still unhappy. But yes, thumbs up. Um, via training and procedures, so training helps. Making culture activities, absolutely, thumbs up. Uh, crew changes on time, I don't know what to say about that. Uh, what I can say is that, yes, I can imagine sometimes crew changes not happening on time, but you know what I realized about this life of ours, that we're always faced with circumstances and we always have two choices. Choice number one, uh, Crew changes are not happening on time, and I'm choosing to be miserable, moaning, blah, 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 blah. or crew change is not happening on time, and I'm choosing to be in a place of peace and loving and love. All right? So there's always a choice about what you're gonna what you're gonna think about your situation, and good communication uh, with each other on board. Absolutely, thumbs up. Now. Uh, let me give you some of my thoughts regarding um, injecting a well-being culture. Number one, uh, toxic leadership does not help trigger well-being. You know, in Cyprus, in, Greek, in Greece, we have a saying that the fish stinks from the head. And, you know, toxic leadership, let me give you examples of toxic leadership. A toxic leader could be somebody who's manipulative. A toxic leader could be somebody who is authoritative who uses uh, fear to manage uh, people. Uh, a toxic leader is a person who lacks the emotional competencies, who has no clue not only how his people or her people are thinking, are feeling, but about him, himself. He's not in tune with emotions. Right. And we need to tune into emotions because emotion is what drives us to work. Emotion. The word says it. Emotion. Energy in motion. Right. Um, so, you know, toxic leadership. I'm, I belong to a generation, an old generation where we tolerated toxic leaders. But younger generations are not having it. They're not putting up anymore with toxic leaders. We want leaders who are coaches, leaders who are mentors, leaders who use their ears and their heart to listen. And you know another thing that I, I'm also in the area of human resources and I'm being around people, developing people. And you know, I love humans and I believe in human beings and some of us can bring out the best in a person and some of us can bring out the worst in a person. And you see this even in married couples. You see two people getting married out of love and, you know, there's passion and everything. And then as the years go by, they bring out the, wor the worst in each other. Right? So, you know, it's, it's a skill to get a person to develop in your team. And it's a skill to try and figure out, I know, how do I bring out the best in this person? Um, if there's too much of a telling culture, I find it doesn't work. What's a telling culture? A telling culture is a culture where the bosses, whether you're a supervisor or a manager or um, a captain, uh, is, uses, uses more of his mouth and less the ears. You have to do this and you have to do that. And I told you a thousand times, you know, and usually I see meetings where the, the boss let's say we have a 20 minute meeting and for 19 minutes it's the boss talking da, 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 you have to do you have to do I've told you so many times information information and there's nothing on behalf of the the crew of the employees you know and you know the too much telling culture turns people into um there's lack of initiative, lack of responsibility, lack of new ideas, lack of creativity. People give up and they just end up working for the money. Um, emotionally intelligent leadership can inspire and influence well-being. Like emotionally intelligent leadership is a very big thing and it has been around 20 years now over. Um, exercising, meditation and yoga are definitely beautiful triggers to well-being. And you know what? Laughter. Laughter, laughter, laughter. Do something that triggers laughter. Uh, did you know that there's people who 
uh, have managed to escape from depression simply, simply by watching Friends, the series. Um, so yeah, thumbs up to laughter. Now, these are some triggers, but I want to talk about well-being creator, creation. You can give people the tools to manage their mental health, but you cannot manage it on their behalf. You can only manage yours, right? So it isn't, you know, the well-being of a person is really not to be outsourced. And unfortunately, a lot of us have learned since childhood that happiness is something that has to be given from one person to the other, right? I don't know how you guys and girls were brought up, but, you know, I remember my mom saying, Christina, mommy's not happy because you haven't finished your food. And my mommy's going to be happy when you finish your food. All right, so what am I thinking? What is Christina thinking? Oh, I'm associating happiness, like a job that I have to do for mommy. Right? Oh, dad is not happy because you haven't studied today. I'm going to be happy when you stop playing games and you, you go and, and study. Um, dad is not happy because you got a very, very low grade in maths. I'm going to be happy when you do this. I'm going to be happy when you get married. Uh, I'm going to be happy when you have kids and you give me grandchildren. So we have learned uh, that uh, happiness is something that I have to give to somebody else. And this is like false, like so totally uh, falls and sometimes people get married based on the idea that the other person is going to make them happy and you see like a boy and a girl like meeting and they fall madly in love and they are at the early stages of their relationship I repeat the early and you see them like totally in love and you know the the, the guy says to the girl what do you want honey what do you want? Just tell me what you want. And she goes, nothing. Just make me happy. Just, you know, it's just it's because it's a tiny, easy thing. But let me tell you something. If you feel responsible for a person's happiness, it means you're responsible for a person's unhappiness. And trust me, it's a hell of a job. You don't want to do that. Because if you try and make this person happy and that person happy and that person happy, you're just destroying yourself. You'll, you'll end up taking medication. That's it. And going to therapy, right? So in other words, my dear friends uh, who are listening, um, yes, go ahead and inject well-being triggers, thumbs up. But at the same time, we need to educate every single person um, on board that they have a responsibility in creating well-being within. Now, what you can do to enhance well-being is give people your time, your full and undivided attention uh, to listen, coach, and mentor. Now, let me tell you a few things about coaching and mentoring. This has become, this is growing. Coaching and mentoring is growing. There is an increasing need for people to have a mentor or a coach. And it's very important if you're in a management position, uh, even if you have one person working for you and in, in you are a team of two, do enhance and work on your coaching skills and mentorship skills because this is an enhancer of well being. So let's see, how is uh, the well-being created? Um, well-being is, is very much an inner job, an, an internal job. Now, we have, all human beings, we have two worlds. The external world, which is your world, what you can see, hear, smell, and taste. You know, your situation, your status, your job, the money that you earn, your bank account, your relationship. That's your external world. It's you and the others, you and your life. But you and I also have an internal world, which is often disregarded. And most of us live our lives. A lot of people die and they don't realize they have an inner world. We pretend it doesn't exist. And yet the inner world, your inner world is, is your foundation to success and my foundation to success. Because we all have dreams, we all have ambitions. And if we don't look within, 
we're not going to build the world that we want on the outside. So uh, who is the creator of your happiness? The creator of your happiness is not putting a snooker table on board, but it's the thoughts, right? It's the thoughts. You can give a person something to trigger happiness and they might go, why are they doing this? You know, take it the wrong way because it's the thought that is going to create the well-being. And I don't know if you attended the previous webinar, but we discussed thoughts that we produce 70,000 thoughts per day. And most of these thoughts, 80% of those thoughts are negative thoughts. They're like, I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to do it. I hate my job. I don't like this. I don't like my boss. He doesn't speak nice to me. I don't have enough money. I cannot support my family. I've been on board too much time. I cannot take it anymore. I cannot take it anymore. I cannot take it anymore. My family misses me. They're putting a pressure on me. So it's like, um, it's, if you sleep for eight hours, uh, so you're awake for 16, you're literally, literally producing 73 thoughts per minute. Even as, as you are observing the sem this webinar and you're, you think you're focusing on me, I know you are, however, your brain is a machine that is da -da 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 producing thoughts. Now, you cannot control the thoughts that your staff are producing, but you can control yours. Right? So our state of being, if we are in a well-being state, it's a result of the thoughts that we create. Any state. Stress state, anxiety straight, this state. So how do you know uh, whether you're creating well-being thoughts? You know, thoughts that will put you in that state of feeling happy and at peace and joyful. Uh, one key is to start observing yourself. How do you describe your reality? When you talk to your friends, what do you say? What phrases do you use? You know, when, when you talk to your friends, do you say stuff like, oh, I'm sick and tired of, of work and, and I don't like it anymore and, and it's really life is so miserable and there's too many things to do and, and my family is not, you know, my wife doesn't listen to me and da da da. How, how do you use words like it's impossible, it's difficult, it's hard? Or do you use words like, you know, I'm grateful to be alive. You know, I love my life. Um, thank God I've got a job. I'm getting paid. Um, another thing is, you know, do you often complain? Because if you're the complaining type, complaining is, is toxic. And too much complaining on board is like injecting um, bad being. You know, nobody likes to listen to a person who always moans and complains. And you know, there's groups of people on, on, in any organization on board. There's like cliques, teams of people, and they meet and their goal is to talk badly about the others. And this is a bad being uh, example. And my suggestion is, you know, if you're the boss, cut it out. Cut it out. Don't, I, in my opinion, there needs to be zero tolerance zero tolerance of people being judgmental, criticizing, gossiping, talking badly about other people behind their back. Uh, look at yourself. Are you a smiley person? Do you, do you smile? Do you, do you smile when you, when you are at work? Do you smile when, you, when you're at home? Because uh, the smile shows whether you're thinking thoughts of gratitude and joy or whether you're thinking thoughts of stress and anger. Um, so behaviors um, that uh, build or de behaviors build uh, the onboard culture. So let's look at some behaviors that are destructors of a well-being culture. If there's a culture on board where there's too much judging, too much criticism and less praise, if we label people, labeling is like he's irresponsible, he's an idiot, he's useless. This labeling uh, knocks people down and creates a very negative atmosphere. A lot of blaming, like a mistake happens, something goes wrong on, on, on board and um, 
and people are like, not my fault. It didn't have, I wasn't here. You know, I told that person and, and he did, and, and he didn't listen to me. And I, I don't know, I have no idea. Uh, this creates a, a negativity and bad being on board and too much complaining, too much complaining. And it takes, um, takes skill to, when you have a person, how do you deal with a person who comes to you and says, you know, um, I'm really pissed off and I'm really angry and I've got to tell you what this person did. Um, you know, you have a choice. You, you either encourage them and you go, oh, really? Yes, he is a bleep. You know, he is this and that and the other. Uh, or you can simply say, I have to go to the toilet. Excuse me. It's just you need to figure out a way to, to get out of this and not tolerate uh, gossiping and complaining. So it's not what happens to you that matters, but rather how you respond to a, what happens. Uh, so there's there, so something happens that triggers good thoughts, and some the same thing happens that triggers negative thoughts. So let's say uh, there's too many crew changes, and it could trigger a person anger because that person created thoughts of anger, or it could trigger okay, this is life, what to do. So let me give you an example. A well-being trigger, I'm um, using the example, let's say it's a snooker table. Let's say we decide to put snooker tables on board. I don't know if that's possible, if that can happen, but let, it's, it's a, it's a well-being uh, trigger. It could trigger well-being to a person who thinks, oh, how nice of them. What a generous gesture. They really care. I cannot wait to learn. Right, so this thought is obviously going to create positive emotions, well-being emotions. But somebody could say, huh, instead of giving us a pay rise, they spend money on rubbish. What is this? What is what are they trying to do? Huh? Right? So as you can see, my dear friends, uh, well-being is very much triggered by what happens to each person here. Let me check the time. How are we doing? Right, so I've shown this, this is one of my favorite slides because it shows how the personality, what the personality of each person is all about. So our personality is a sum of what we're thinking, what we're feeling, and in effect, how we behave, right? So the thoughts and the emotions are internally, they're happening within each person. So the first thing that happens is we create thoughts. Instantly, emotions are created in the body and the emotion is basically a chemical produced by the body and we interpret it. So the chemical of stress is interpreted, oh, oh, I'm feeling stressed, I'm feeling really anxious. Or the chemical of joy is this wonderful feeling that you're like, oh, you know, I can conquer the world, I feel really nice. And the behavior of, you know, what is the behavior is how we talk, how we complete a task, how we do a job, how we perform, how we communicate. It's a result of what we're thinking and what we're feeling, right? Now, you uh, could, have, you know, the, the first person that you need to support of all people is yourselves. Focus on your own personality, on how you can build an internal world of, you know, well-being so that your cells are also in a well-being environment. Because if you do that for yourself, then you will transmit it. It's, it's quite contagious um, to, to the others. Now, we don't know how many thoughts we're producing, we, we, no, sorry, we know how many thoughts we're producing, but we don't know the exact thoughts that we're doing, but we have an indication what we're thinking about through the emotions. Every person knows at any moment in time, you guys and girls, you know how you're feeling. You know how you're feeling right now. Are you feeling at ease? Um, are you feeling comfortable? Are you feeling stressed because you're thinking about the jobs that you got to do? 
So at any moment in time, you are in a place, you know, your, your body and your mind is in, a, is in a place. So are you in a place of um, self-confidence? Are you in a place of fear? I'm afraid something is wrong is going to happen to my family, you know, because it, it could happen. So you know at any moment in time your emotions. You may not know exactly the 70,000 words that you're producing, but you know what your body is telling you. And, you know, that's why I'm telling in my seminars, I'm telling people, you know, we got to start teaching emotions. We got to learn to tune into our emotions and listen to them because they're giving us a signal they're telling us if we are in the wrong place or the right place because if you're in a place of stress long term this could affect your health and my health now it's okay to feel stressed it's okay to go into that place but it's not okay to remain in the place of stress. And some people remain in a place of stress for years. It's okay when you're 20 and 30, because your cells are quite strong and they can fight and they're okay. But chronic stress, chronic anxiety, when we're reaching our 50s, that's when uh, the body moves from ease to dis-ease. So that is another reason why we need to work on building a well-being within. So emotions is, is, is an amazing built-in system that tells you exactly what your state of being is, the location, your location. It's your GPS. And it's the way that of the body to tell you what your mind is thinking. Where is it focusing? Are you focusing on, on things that you don't like? Because if you're focusing on things that you don't like, you are recreating and recreating and recreating experiences, life experience that you do not like. It's sort of like a law. Uh, the emotions are like, for those of you who drive, you have a, a fuel indicator. Can you imagine if you had a car without a fuel indicator? Can you imagine what would happen? You'd see a lot of cars stopped. So the reason why we have a fuel indicator is to warn us and tell us, hey, tell us, hey you got to go to the nearest fuel station and fill up. But when you see your fuel indicator going all the way down to the red, you're not going to pull on the side and say, I am doomed. This is the end of my life. You're not going to say that. You're going to say, oh, oh, yeah, I need a fuel station. Where is it? You know, and fill it up. But human beings, when they are in a place of stress, the red in the fuel indicator, they're like, oh, I don't my life. I don't like my life. I hate my life. Um, and, and they stay there. They stay there. They refuse to move away. So that's the reason. That's the pure reason why you have emotions is so that they tell, your body's telling you, hello, there's toxicity in your body. And if you remain in that, you're going to get sick and you're going to spread the toxicity to the other people around you, right? So I just want to ask you a question. What, what are the overall emotions on board? What are they? I'm very curious. I mean, there's, there's no, it's not a bad thing to say, hey, there's a lot of stress. They're in a, in a stress street, the people there, or they are in, in an anger street. There's a lot of anger in there. Uh, so are, are, are they well-being emotions? So if you want to inject the well-being um, culture um, on board, you need to start thinking right now and see the truth. See the truth. There's, there's no point in hiding the emotions under the carpet. See the truth. What's the truth? What's, what's life on board? What are they? Are they happy or unhappy? Right, so on board, I'm sure they, everybody's working hard and they perform, they have to perform. You know, we're like actors on stage. So the crew needs to be productive, producing quality work. But every time we do something, every time we perform an activity, a task, we are in a place, right? Because your body is there performing a task, performing the job. So if the body is there, it means that that body 
is producing an emotion, a chemical called the emotion. So when I'm doing a job, like not, right now I'm delivering a webinar. Am I in a place of boredom? Why am I here? Why am I doing this webinar? Um, or am I in a place of, hey, I'm so eager and excited, you know, uh, sharing? You no, know, this is exactly the same thing that happens on board. You know, people do a job, but are they in a place of excitement and eagerness or are they in a place of, Ugh. I want to get it over and done with because that will affect the quality of the work and the productivity. The word says it, emotion, E-motion, energy in motion. So, um, so every time your staff performs, are they in a place of determination and drive or are they in a place of anger? Uh, are they in a place of frustration, of stress, unconditional love, of caring? And you know, another suggestion I have uh, for you is like, you know, it's really hard but, and it takes time, but it will help. When you're coaching your staff, talk emotions, like, how do you feel? I always, when I coach a person and they describe an incident, something that happened, my first question is, how do you feel about this? Now, it's very hard for people to put a label on the emotion because we were never taught in school to appreciate emotions but you can give them triggers like did you feel disappointed did you feel hurt did you feel angry did you feel frustrated you know when you put these words they're gonna think oh yeah yeah I, I, I felt frustration uh, well it's okay to feel frustration because the first thing you need to manage is not the actual thing that happened the first thing you need to help the other person manage is their emotion they need to take the frustration out of their body and then act. You know, I always say this, we are human beings, we're not human doings, right? And yet we push people to take action, take action, A, B, C, do this, do that, do the other. But it's very difficult to take action from a place of um, anger. It's very difficult to make a decision from a place of anger. So this place exists within each person. And you know what I, what I tell people is stop expecting your boss to change so that you are happy. Stop expecting your child's behavior to change so that you are happy. Make the conscious decision because you'll never be happy. End of story. Full stop. Um, so as a start is each and every one of you just make that conscious decision I want to be happy. I want to experience well-being. And when your mind says, yeah, but how could you be happy if A, do, 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 A B, C, D is happening? Because this is what your brain does. It wants to remind you how stressful your life is and how the bad things, you know, the, it's the thing of the mind. It wants to drag you and remind you of how tough things are. Um, no, take the reins. Take the reins and say, you know, I want to, I came to this world not to, to be miserable and unhappy you know i want to find a way to be happy do you know you know the sea when there is turbulence when there's um, waves and it looks like hell with the big waves you know when you go under the sea it's actually peaceful so you want to be there you want to be in that you, you want yes you have the turbulence the big waves in your life the challenges in your life but you don't want to be on top where the waves are emotionally. Emotionally, you want to be in a, at the bottom of the ocean where there's peace and calm. You know, you want to be in a place of peace, in a place of well-being, despite the circumstances, despite you know, the waves. And this takes a lot of work, uh, um, a lot of work. It's an everyday job. It's, it's really like brushing your teeth. You're not going to brush your teeth once and then... I'm never brushing my teeth again. I'm done with brushing my teeth. Um, you're going to do it every day. So well-being creation is, is, a, is an everyday practice so that you train the mind, this muscle, to produce thoughts of well-being and thoughts of happiness. So another suggestion I want to give to you is learning, learning, learning. Uh, teaching, teaching your staff about well-being. Somebody mentioned well-being aware uh, sorry uh, yeah well-being awareness and this is done through uh, reading lots of books uh, 
There's an abundance of free content in YouTube of you know, how to train your mind and how to really, really genuinely build from within the happiness. Um, so uh, what you can do externally is, you know, we discussed earlier on anything that generates laughter, um, some facilities that trigger well-being on board, exercising, nutrition plays a big part, what you're eating. Um, and again, I'm a very big, I've, I've been in learning and development since 1996, and I grew up in this area. And learning and development is, is the soft skills are growing rapidly, rapidly. Reports in America on L&D are continuously focusing on soft skills, how to build yourself as a human being, as a person. Um, Google doesn't hire on, um, doesn't hire on, on competencies and skills, it hires on attitude, it hires on personality. And this starts from within. Uh, encourage socializing. Again, you mentioned it in your ideas. Thumbs up. Uh, games. Games are such a... Everybody likes games. Is there a person who doesn't like games? Um, anything that triggers laughter and fun. Um, right. So where am I now? So again, as I said earlier on, there's an abundance of content out there. Cultivate your inner world. You know, th that is your job. That is your job every day. How do, how do I make myself happy? Uh, don't forget, you're a human being. You're not a human doing, right? So if you, gotta, if you have an action list to do, A, B, C, D, uh, make sure you're, you fix your being in a state. Put yourself in a nice place. Uh, Well-being is not what you do to a person, but what you are. Happiness is not something that comes in the future. Oh my God, no, I'll be happy when. I'll be happy when I get off board. I'll be happy when I change a boss. I'll be happy when my wife leaves me alone. I'll be happy when the mother-in-law moves out of the house. Oh, I guarantee you, you'll be in a bad being state forever. Uh, making other people feel happy, you know, you know these movies we used to watch, in the 80s, make me happy, I'm gonna make you happy, I promise I'm gonna make you happy for the rest of my life. You know, this is like so, such false premise. Um, happiness is not found, happiness is found in appreciation, gratitude and love, you know? You know what, I, you know, a lot of us wake up in the morning and we wake up and we say, oh no, I uh, I'm so bored and I don't wanna get up. And I, Oh, another day, and I don't like it, and, and why is that? And we totally, totally forgot about gratitude, about saying stuff like, I'm alive, I can breathe, I'm not in the hospital, isn't that a blessing? Um, I have money to feed my family. You know, we, we have to sort of like have to focus on the negatives, and we totally forgot the good stuff that is happening in our lives, and yet... Um, appreciation and gratitude is a magnet for goodies. If you want goodies in your life, good experiences, gratitude. And another thing I want to say to you, comparing yourself to others, uh, this creates tension and it puts you in a bad being state. Uh, you're only, the only person you need to compare yourself to is yourself. So are you a better version of yourself today than yesterday? If yes, good. So forget about the others. Forget about other people's behavior because the more you focus on other people's behavior, you ignore your own well-being. So focus on you. How can I be a better version of myself? And a better version means how can I be a happier person? <clears throat> So just some tips, some more tips. As we said earlier on, <clears throat> excuse me, well-being are the happy emotions like passion, excitement, peace, love, joy, and happiness. Um, communication is a big part in business. 
So make sure you communicate from a place of joy, not from a place of anger. If you're angry with a person, don't take action. Don't talk to them. Go to the place of calmness state and then talk. Uh, inspire a person from a place of joy, not from a place of frustration. Give instructions to a person from a place of faith in them, not a, a place of, I don't believe in you, I think you're crappy, I hate you. Uh, set goals from a place of positivity and faith, not from a place of, oh, I'm setting goals for the sake of setting goals and it's, it's not going to work. Uh, discipline a person from a place of peace, not from a place of, I hate you and I'm going to really knock you down and I'm really going to teach you a lesson. Uh, bring about change from a place of positivity and give announcements. You know, as, as you see in this slide, I'm just putting little tasks, little things that we all do every single day. Actions, if you like. But it's really important to be in that place of well-being because you're a human being and not a human doing. Right. So what we have learned so far, we've reached the end of our webinar and we have looked at the essentials of creating a well-being culture. We looked at well-being triggers, what to do on board, some ideas, and we've looked at how to create and the importance of creating well-being from within. Which tools can leaders use to deal with this extreme new normal? Also, which skills should be developed? Uh, right, excellent question. Right, so we're all facing a new normal. Now, first of all, keep away from people who uh, talk about the disaster that is coming. We're all going to die. We'll all be destroyed. You know, there's people who say, oh, there's going to be a second wave and what's going to happen to us and our economies don't have, our governments don't have any money and we're going to go bankrupt. So um, you really, as leaders, you are role models. So be careful of the language that you use, right? Phrases like, oh, it's going to be the end of the world and we're all going to die. Uh, and this is going to happen. This, you know, you, you're, you're not, um, you know, you, you don't know the, the future, but what, what you do know is that you can create your own future. And as a leader, you really need to talk with positivity, not negativity, not talking this bad thing is going to happen and this bad thing is going to happen and 30% of people are going to lose their jobs. No, just say, yes, it's a new normal. Yes, we are strong human beings, and yes, we will survive. We're survivors. We know how to survive. So positivity, faith, strength, knowing that everything is working out, not knowing that everything is going to not work out. Which skills should be developed? Definitely soft skills. Definitely how to manage yourself, how to manage your emotions. Definitely how to manage... Um, uh, any stressful thoughts about the future, thoughts that are causing you insecurity about the future. So it's definitely skills to build a strong inner self so that you can fight and be a winner at the end of this COVID era that, that we're experiencing. So if, if I was in your shoes, and I am in your shoes, because I'm also experiencing the COVID era, is I'm continuously focusing on, on my beingness state, you know, how to manage my emotions, how to, be, how to be thinking thoughts of gratitude, thoughts that everything is working out. I would do courses on emotional intelligence because emotional intelligence is a very, um, it, it's, it's really what to, how to make yourself strong and how to face adversities. And emotional intelligence 100%, no, 50%, 60% of emotional intelligence has to do with managing your, being aware of yourself, uh, managing yourself, motivating yourself, and the other 40% has to do with managing relationships, understanding others, compassion, listening, you know, the coaching that we were talking about earlier. Hi, Christina, I love your insights. Thank you. Question, how will a person on the bottom of the hierarchy 
encourage well-being on board, speaking in a point of view of a dead cadet. Do you know something? You don't really need to do something. You don't really need to talk to a person and persuade them. All you have to do is just find well-being within. Well-being state is an energy and it projects outside of you. Um, people say to me, how do I persuade another person to be happy or not to be depressed? You know, you never persuade a person. Persuasion pisses people off. Think about the time when a salesperson was trying to persuade you to buy pots and pans. Didn't you want to get that pot and bang it on his head? So forget trying to persuade somebody and be a role model, be an example. Make the other person say, how does he do it? How, do, how is he so happy? How, I mean, we are experiencing the same life on board. We're doing the same jobs. How is he maintaining happiness? And it, it makes people wonder and they, it makes people want to be the same because everybody wants to be happy. There's not a single person who wakes up in the morning and says, I have decided today I'm going to be really unhappy. Right? So be, Gandhi said, be the change you want the others to be. Mm. Be. So be happy and then the others will follow. We can introduce some training sessions for all crew who are joining Vessel to enhance their ability uh, to work on board with happiness and joy. Definitely, most definitely, training, learning, anything, anything, anything to inspire people. Sometimes crew has to work beyond the set time on board. For example, four months, I didn't see first, we're forced to stay on board beyond the contract. Okay, okay, so I apologize, I, I see. Thank you, Alex. Um, so you may, so if your contract is four months and you stay for six months, well, again, the, the answer is, is open and honest communication. If I was the leader, if I was the captain, I'd be like, I know your contract is four months, but Hey, I really need you to stay another two months. How do you feel about it? Uh, compassion. Um, and that's compassion. Compassion actually fixes everything showing that you understand the other person. As a captain, I had many times situations related to the exceeding um, the agreed period of time of the contract due to different reasons. Oh, okay, I see. Right. Now, you know what I think? If this thing annoys you, which I'm guessing it does, which is why you're posing the question, if this annoys you, if this is a stressor, then really the obvious thing to do is like really being assertive about it and confront it. I'm not asking you to confront it in a very highly emotional way. Um, and it's generally bad for the morale. Right now, you know, you, you, you always have, you know what I realized in life that we always have a choice. We always have a choice of what to think and what to feel in each situation. If you have a situation that makes you unhappy, you have a choice of burying it inside of you, like not saying anything and not even managing within yourself a negative emotion or managing your emotion and talking to the person or managing your emotion and not talking to the person. Because let's say you're afraid, you don't want to Talk about it. So there's, there's always a choice about how to, how to react and what to say. Now, if it's bad for the morale, um, that means you're feeling very low. You might be feeling tired. You might be feeling frustrated and you might feel unfairness. My suggestion is really, really speak up speak up, say in an assertive manner, in a caring manner, talk to a person you can confide to and say, say what you do not like. You, you know something, 
As human beings, we have the right to speak up. Speaking up. But whether you speak up or not, you owe it to yourself to uplift yourself, to increase your morale. You owe that not to the company that you work for, but you owe it to yourself and your family.